Well, good to see you. Today is Thursday, the 3rd of September, and what a blessed day it is. Today, uh, we're going to talk about Esther. Uh, Esther is quite the Bible hero, and any discussion of Bible heroes in Scripture uh, without Esther would be remiss. You know, Esther is a story of that has it all. Yeah, I think of Esther as the Old Testament soap opera. It's got uh, kings and exiles. It's got uh, sex and sexuality. It's got uh, backstabbing and murder. <laughs> uh, it's got lies and deceit and the rest. But throughout the story, and it sounds terrible, I suppose, but throughout the story, we find a woman that is faithful to God and faithful to her people. Esther and her guardian, Mordecai, have been exiled from Israel. And God is, is working his plan to bring the Jews back to himself and to, their, and to their land. Well, long story short, it turns out, of course, that uh, Esther is made queen. Esther and Mordecai develop a plan to save the people of Israel. And the story goes on. And at the very end, Mordecai records the events through a couple of letters that he sends to the provinces of King Xerxes uh, to have them celebrate an annual festival called uh, Purim. And this festival commemorates the Lord's faithfulness. And let me just read for you what that was supposed to look like. Mordecai, uh, by the way, Esther chapter 9 and verse 20, Mordecai recorded these events, so the events of God's faithfulness through Esther in particular, and he sent letters to all the Jews throughout the provinces of King Xerxes, near and far, to have them celebrate annually the 14th and 15th days of the month of Adar, as the time when the Jews got relief from their enemies and as the month when their sorrow was turned into joy and the morning into a day of celebration. He wrote them to observe the days as days of feasting and joy and giving presents of food to one another and gifts to the poor. Wow, what a legacy Esther leaves behind, isn't it? I mean, let, let's hear what the, the Jews are to do on two days of the year. Uh, they are to observe these days as days of feasting. I mean, feasting was hard to come by, especially in the time of Esther and Mordecai and King Xerxes. This is uh, well before the time where uh, things started to get cooking with uh, industrialism and, and all the rest. This was still very primitive times. And so times of feasting, especially two days. And by the way, this is for all the people of Israel. I mean, there were those who feasted, but there are few and far between who, as they say, lived high on the hog. But for two days, the whole people of Israel were to feast. And this day was not supposed to be a day of of grieving and mourning and sorrow. They weren't to look back on their time with King Xerxes and being exiled and, and cast out from their land as, as something to lament. Woe is me, look what God caused or allowed upon us. No, they're, they're to celebrate. Uh, they're to move past that morning and celebrate with joy, with celebration, these days of feasting. And friends, you know, I think about the lives that we live. So often we get stuck in the, in the mire and the bitterness of the, of the ugliness of life. And we think, oh, woe is me. I was, I was so hurt. I was uh, so displaced. It was so unjust upon me. But God says we are to be victors, not victims. And to see God's faithfulness, yes, even in and through those times of sorrow and disappointment and, and pain and suffering. 
And then lastly, they are to give presents of food to one another and gifts to the poor. Whenever a people celebrate, they are to look out for those who are less fortunate than them. And I know many of you do this. I'm thinking of a family in our church and you know who you are, but I'm not gonna disclose you quite yet. <laughs> uh, I haven't been given permission to do that. But every Thanksgiving holiday, they drop by, uh, or sometimes it's Christmas and sometimes both, or even Easter. Uh, they drop by food for the less important. The less, the, the less, uh, those who have less than us, they're equally important, of course, but those who are on the margins and so it's such a gift as they celebrate to celebrate with others. It's usually turkey or ham and all the fixins. And it's their way of remembering not only to give presents to each other, of food in particular, but also to those who are needy, who are poor, who are marginalized. So we learn a lot from Esther, don't we? Our faithfulness and then what God does with her and through her for the people of God. Some things to remember here. I hope God plants those firmly and deeply in your hearts. Let's pray. Lord God, we're grateful to be together. Uh, we ask for your continued blessing upon us. Lord, help us to, to conquer uh, our victim mentality and live as victors in Christ Jesus. May we celebrate with feasting and joy and giving presents to others and those who are in need to remember your faithfulness to us as the people of Israel remembered their faithfulness or your faithfulness to them through Esther. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Tomorrow's Friday. Oh. By the way, you may be wondering where I am, and some of you have probably figured it out already, but I'm at the uh, Richland Bend um, National Wildlife Unit on the Pasco side of the river, uh, looking across towards basically Howard Amon Park. And it's, uh, oh, it's a beautiful morning and a joy to be here. Anyway, I love you. I miss you. I see you tomorrow. It's Friday. Looking forward to it. Bye-bye.